Hello students, uh, this is myself uh, Dr. Raj Shekhar. So today I'm going to talk to you about one of the question asked recently in 2017 mains paper in anthropology and this came in section B, okay, question 1, talking about Hardy Winberg law. And this is given for a 10 mark. Okay. So, uh, we are going to divide this question into four different categories. One, we will talk about what exactly is this law. Okay. And then we will talk about the assumptions under which this law actually operates. And in third, we will talk about equation the mathematical equation that describes this law and finally we will close this question answering the applications of hardy winberg law okay so to begin with what exactly is hardy winberg law as the name suggests it is given by two scientists hardy and winberg in 1908 describing genetic equilibrium okay meaning they are talking about the genes and of course alternate forms of these genes that are alleles and their frequencies And this actually forms the fundamental basis for population genetics that evolved over time. The exact law that they are talking about how gene frequencies and the allelic frequencies remain constant from generation to generation. So these frequencies remain constant from one generation to the another generation meaning that they are actually are at an equilibrium okay through the inheritance process this is exactly what this law talks about but it only operates under certain assumptions what are those assumptions okay you probably heard about something called genetic drift this is random chance of losing or changing the frequencies over time okay which normally happens in a small population so for this law to follow or to operate we actually need larger populations where genetic drift is low so you don't notice the change in the frequencies because of the genetic drift. So this law only operates in larger populations. And the second assumption is population should be indulged in random mating. Otherwise you are actually inclining towards certain characters okay, which will affect the this frequencies that we are talking here. And the third one there should not be any factors, any evolutionary factors in specific such as mutation, natural selection and migration. If you have any of these operating, they will affect the frequencies of the alleles that we are looking at. Okay? So, only under these assumptions this law holds true, otherwise any variation that can affect the genetic equilibrium will affect the Hardy-Winberg law, okay, right. So, next moving on to the equation part of this. Okay, we'll take a simple example here. Okay, a character that has only two alleles. Okay, let's assume that 
the dominant allele is capital A and the recessive allele is small a. And if you assume that the frequency given by capital allele is P and the frequency for small allele is Q. Let us make a simple chart to come up with the frequencies that we can actually calculate for these two alleles in a population. Okay? If you say that these are male gametes okay? and female gametes. An average population, there are two possibilities capital A and small a, and a capital A and small a. Okay. So, the combination between capital A and capital A gives rise to a genotype like this, and combination between capital A and small a and combination between capital A and small a again and a combination between small a and small a. Okay? So, as we define that P actually denotes the frequency of capital A and Q denotes the frequency of the small a in the population. So, we can write that frequency for this will be P into P that is P square, frequency for this will be P into Q and frequency per, for this will be p into q and the last one will have q into q that is q square. If we write them together, if you actually notice that we have p square for frequency of dominant alleles and for the frequency of heterozygous condition, we have two such situations. So, that will be 2 p q and then we have a situation where there is only one recessive allele. So, p square plus 2 p q plus q square. If you probably you can recollect that this is an equation that most of us are familiar with a simple algebraic equation where we are talking about p plus q whole square. And as it is a population the frequency of all the possible alleles should match to 100 percent. Okay, which we will denote by just number 1. So, all these frequencies should match to 1. This is the Hardy-Winberg law and Hardy-Winberg equ equation for a simple alleles, which, are, which there are two alleles for a simple character. And we can utilize this for calculating the frequency of any allele in a population. With that, let us move to the, the last part of this question that is applications. So, where exactly can we use this hardy winberg law? As the name suggests and as the, the discussion based on the discussion we had so far, the frequencies that we have seen of any allele can be calculated using hardy winberg law. And to check whether population exists at a genetic equilibrium. Of course, this is with respect to a specific gene okay? and any deviation from this equilibrium tells us that there is an external factor such as evolutionary factor is acting on this. That is why this equilibrium is getting disturbed. Okay? So, that also allows us to expand this equation to predict or probably the better word is to model it because we are mathematically doing it. To model this to understand the, the in, sorry, evolutionary factors. And the third and the most important application of this, we all know that in, the, in, a, in a given population, we notice that genetic disorders usually governed by recessive alleles. So, that can be seen in the form of heterozygotes, right? Assuming that in the previous example, capital A and small a, okay, where 
recessive alleles in a homozygous condition causes the disease. This gives us an idea about how population is going forward with respect to these alleles. So, if you quantify heterozygotes, you would know what way this disease is proceeding. That would tell us to come across or to actually come up with any preventive measures in order to understand the, the progress of this disease and such examples that are used to study is thalassemia, both beta thalassemia and alpha thalassemia okay. and also it can be used for the other, other autosomal recessive disorders such as Tay-Sachs and there are many more examples to that. Okay. This is in nutshell what you would cover to describe Hardy-Winberg law under four different subheadings. Okay. Thank you.